tonight. In a faraway kingdom. Teams, welcome to the 13th century. It's game on for group two. It's almost like the stuff of legends. Well, this will be interesting. I was a guest on My Kitchen Rules. So I decided to comment on some of the things that happened on My Kitchen Rules. Um, I don't typically watch the show. So you're going to watch it along with me, little snippets, and I'm going to be commenting on them. Hope you enjoy. This is going to be a fairly long video, so just click around to find the comments. If you're just wanting the comments on historical accuracy, that's right towards the end, about 10 minutes from the end. So click to there and you'll be able to see that. God, I miss Heath Ledger. I wonder what challenge we're doing today. Oh, oh these horses are so big. Yeah. Look at that. It's amazing. We're like created like queens. Good queens or bad queens? Um, I think we're both evil queens. From high tea to this, taking a jump back in time. James, welcome to the 13th century. <laughs> We have arrived at the St. Dives Medieval Fair. Best fair in Australia. The crowds here immerse themselves in the spirit of medieval times. People camp out. There will be combat, falconry, and catapults. And that means group two, you're going to have to get into the spirit of the occasion too by preparing a medieval feast fit for a king. In fact, two kings. <laughs> And for a huge medieval table full of lords, ladies, wenches, and medieval jesters. <laughs> wenches? Jesters? <laughs> oh, I'm group one. <laughs> All right, I'm the wench. In keeping with the times, there will be no electricity today. <laughs> no whizzing, no blending, no induction, a few trusty knives, pots and pans, and... You'll be cooking over hot coals. Yeah. <laughs> We've all seen movies where the monarch is feasting on a banquet. Thick roasts, stews, huge cuts of meat on the bone. All right, for the reenactors out there, that's the brief. That way. That way. That's the brief. Movie medieval. Not medieval. Um, yeah. More comments at the end of the video if you want to hear comments on the accuracy. Movie medieval. It is a very big challenge cooking for a huge amount of people with no electricity on charcoal that we've never cooked on. And group one is going to be watching and judging very harshly. So, um, thanks to all the medieval cooks out there. It's really difficult cooking for this many people on a fire. It was really difficult for you that weekend because you didn't even have fires. Um, I didn't know that was a thing, but people thought that. I thought all Australians barbecued. Like, isn't that so stereotypically us that, like, that stereotype rage true? Oh, I the wind in. Get a basket, get a... Where's a basket? I'll get the potatoes. Right. And you get the chickens, okay? These seven teams, they're fighting hard today. It's take no prisoners. It's like Game of Thrones with just a little bit less debt. Gotta win the foot race. Snap quiz. What did we see there? Potatoes. Corn. Tomato, turkey. Italia! Coming up, let the jousting begin. And no one's dreaming. I'm ready for a feast. We need a big feast with feet. But for some, I think we bit off more than we can chew, babe. It's a nightmare. Definitely feeling the heat. Oh, oh my god. On a crusade. This could be the best dish I've had so far in the competition. To claim the castle. That's good. It was my hand. I'm famous. Ah! Let's do it. Let the banquet begin! <laughs> Hey guys! Quail, quail. I hope you're hungry! Yeah. Wow. 
if you, like me, have ever watched one of these shows and wondered, do they really serve the food at the same time? Does it come out hot? The answer in this case was yes. They all stopped, brought it out, put it down in front of us, and we ate it. And it was delicious. And it was hot. I was super surprised. Don't be shy to go to town. I'm just doing everything I can to make sure everyone remembers over there, Mark. So, uh, are you royalty? Are you getting treated like royalty today? So, I just do it with my personality. <laughs> Where the seared beef is getting passed around now. And remember, when you're ready for your choice, it's over there, Mark. If you love it. You wanted a meal fit for a king? And look at these platters, mate. Definitely hits the brief. This is a banquish. What do you Definitely hits the brief. See what he did there? This was the brief. And it definitely hit the brief. Devide and Marco's dish looks like a peasant made it. The presentation of it is nothing like what's on this table. I mean, it's just a small little bowl of stew and the beef is raw. It's just a bit odd. I'm, I'm too scared to try that. I don't, I don't want to try that raw meat. Whoever you are that said the meat is raw, you're wrong. That's rare. That's delicious. That's how it should be cooked. Also, that's how it should be served. That was gorgeous. It tasted great. You're wrong. You just look silly. Don't do that. The chicken was roasted and burnt all the way on the outside. Stuffed potatoes, they weren't stuffed. And they were undercooked. You're well, sir. Thank you, my good man. Whales really nice. Oh, there's a garlic stuffed in its bun. That's cool. This is delicious. So there's my real claim to fame in this show. Um, that's my one line that made it in. It's kind of funny. Sven and I had about two hours just riffing off one another, making jokes. They'd come over and film something and film it again and film it again. And the two things that mainly came across with Sven and I was him taking the big hunk of meat and got my bone you'll see that later in the video and then me saying that this quail has garlic stuffed up its butt which it did and it was delicious it's exactly how i would cook it too when we used to raise quails we'd skin them because i can't be bothered plucking a quail um and then i'd stuff them full of all kinds of delicious things wrap them in prosciutto or bacon and then fry them on a barbecue absolutely delicious that was phenomenal well done whoever made the quail so good Sonia and um and Hadil, the seafood platter. George and Alicia with a big leg of glazed turkey, charred pumpkin and Brussels sprouts with a thyme gravy. Hey, full of hand. Gross. Beef rib roast down there that I guarantee will rock your world. I've got my boat. Cheers. Uh, Sven. Two plus hours of filming, riffing off one another, having a good time. I've got quail with garlic stuffed up its butt, and there's you. Ah, bit of meat. Champion. That is awesome. So that was that. It was a good time. I had a really good time. Um, it was great hanging out with some friends, some friends that we don't get to see except when we go down to St. Ives Medieval Fair. Um, it was cool seeing the background of how those kinds of shows work. Um, I mean, I've got to hang out with the crew from Channel 10 before and Channel 9 before and Fox Sports before and ABC before, but I've never hung out with Channel 7 cooking shows i think yeah i think the great escape is channel seven regardless i've never been on one of those sets before and it was very very interesting to see the inner workings first and foremost i want to say congratulations to the contestants that cooked you all did phenomenally um it was a hard situation it was a hard ask and you guys matched the brief you know beautifully you did really well 
Um, secondly, to my catch and rules, come, thank you so much for coming and filming at St. Ives Medieval Fair and allowing me to be part of it. Uh, Bonnie would have been part of it as well, uh, except Bonnie is a celiac and they weren't able to have anyone with food allergies as part of it. Just, and that makes sense because the contestants are just going to cook what the contestants are going to cook. They don't know, um, prior to it. Um, or at least it didn't seem like they knew anyway. I forgot that I have a seafood allergy. Luckily, one of the ladies, you know, four seats down had some Finergan or Polarimin, one of the two. So I was able to take that and still enjoy the seafood and the seafood was good. So for the reenactors and those of you that messaged me about the historical accuracy about the food, this is what you're actually after. There was a few things there that were quite obvious. There was corn though they didn't serve it, which is good. Potato, tomato, and turkey. All of those, as far as I'm aware, now anyone can, can comment and, and correct me with sources, and I'm perfectly happy to learn. As far as I'm aware, they didn't enter Europe until the 16th century, which is outside of when we believe, or when we typically categorize the um, medieval period, especially for Europe. So... Not medieval food. If you serve that to my group or tried to serve it within my group um, or the group that I train with, they would reject it. Like they'd eat it, but they wouldn't put it on public display um, because it's wrong. That's not the guest's fault. It's not even really my kitchen rules fault. It's whoever was designing it. Um, maybe they didn't know reenactors were going to be eating it. Maybe they did. I don't know. Maybe they didn't care. The other thing is the aubergine or eggplant. I'm sorry. Um, I read so many sources that said aubergine, not eggplant. So the eggplant, as far as I'm aware, and from the brief reading I did, eggplant didn't arrive in Europe um, until the 12th century, and it only actually arrived in Arab Arabic Spain, um, which I don't believe means it would have entered the rest of Europe. Um, and for the areas that I typically reenact, like continental Europe um, and England, um, it didn't arrive until the 16th century. Again, I'm happy to be proven wrong. Um, I'm happy for someone to comment that knows more about it than me, but that's what my research, that's what my reading said. So those two things, um, yeah. So the eggplant, the tomato, the turkey, the potato, the corn, they shouldn't really have been served. The other thing that um, I don't believe we should have been doing is serving those huge chunks of meat. When we do medieval feasts um, and we're trying to recreate actual medieval feasts, we don't sit down with massive hunks of meat. If you come to any of our shows, any of our reenactment performances, you will see us sitting down and we will have plates. There will be big hunks of meat on the table, but those hunks of meat are then cut and served to the people. And then we use these fingers, my left hand, to eat our food, a knife or a spoon, no forks. Um, and then we had, you know, our, our smaller fingers for picking up salt and pepper and those kinds of things off the table and serving to one another, washing our hands consistently, wipe our hands on the tablecloth, but not like in a gross kind of messy way. It's just to keep our hands clean as we're eating because we're using our hands to eat. Um, all of those kinds of things, you didn't serve massive big plates, you serve small plates of foods. Um, so the comments, if you watch the actual episode, you would have seen that the, the judges made some comments about the delicious little bits of beef um, not really being very medieval. You're wrong, that was very medieval. Um, we could have seen more interesting things served like pig's heads. Um, like if they did a brawn or a head cheese, that would have been really cool. Um, and I think that would have, that would have piqued the judge's interests, especially Pete Evans. I don't know who that other guy is, but especially Pete Evans, since I know he eats a ketogenic slash paleo diet, um, not very dissimilar to what I eat. Um, and I think he would have been very interested in brawn and you can do brawn in a couple of hours. Um, quite simply you'd have to add a bit of extra gelatin to it but they have those things there though you didn't have electricity so i don't know how you chill it down and it wasn't very cool that weekend it was very queensland's like weather even though we were in sydney but anyway you could have done something like beef tongue and serve that on a plate and then slice nice thin slices off of it that would have been really interesting or pig's trotters would have been cool if you were serving the peasant side um yeah 
The other thing that I'd love for another reenactor to comment if they know about it, I think, I may be wrong, but I think that seafood such as shellfish like lobsters and crabs, as much as it's a delicacy now, I believe it used to be a peasant's food, which means it shouldn't have been served to someone that was dressed the way I or Sven or most of the people there were dressed. Um, not that it matters. Lobster's okay. I prefer Morton Bay bug. Um, or mud crab. Uh, I don't understand what Americans' obsession with lobster is. We have Morton Bay bugs in Australia. They're much better. Um, so, yeah, that's the comments on that. So, no turkey, no potato, no tomato, no corn. I wouldn't serve eggplants either. Don't serve those big hunks of meat. Cut it up. Serve it to us properly. Um, those kinds of things if you're going to run a medieval feast. But for TV, it was fantastic and you know that they were aiming for medieval uh for movie medieval because they reference game of thrones they used we will rock you which is used in a knight's tale they used the game of thrones theme song they referenced all kinds of medieval-esque i think they referenced vikings at some point as well which means they're after the hollywoods which means it's for a general audience and so for the reenactors out there that were messaging me, you know, a little bit angry about what was served and how it was presented and those kinds of things, just remember that entertainment is different to education. I do en edutainment. It's a silly word we've made up to try to incorporate the two together. So it's entertainers' jobs to do something entertaining, which is what they did. Now, it's your job as an educator and my job as an educator to do the educating. And so that is for you to do. And so maybe instead of posting and getting angry online, we could get together, make a video like this, have a discussion. If any of you are cooks out there, medieval cooks, and you want to have a chat to me about medieval food, I'm happy to film it. I'm happy to put it online. I'm happy to put it up as a podcast. That way we can get the real information out there. That's what I'd be looking for from all the reenactors out there. Anyway, I better go polish some armor and some swords. Have a great evening. Cheers.